Amen. Ooh, what a trip. What a trip. If you're here today and you just walked in for the first time, those were pictures, just a few of the many pictures from last week. The trip that these men, guys, go ahead and make your way up that were on the team. Last week, six of us went to the country of Panama. Why do we do that, Pastor Allen? Why would we go overseas when there's such a great need right here? Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my what? Witnesses. Telling people about me everywhere. Everybody, somebody say everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So while there is a great need here, and we do things right here, this is our Jerusalem and our Judea. Robert is doing a lot of stuff in our Samaria, which is, I would consider, downtown Atlanta and things like that. And Pastor Joel is helping him. We're going to be partnering more with him down in downtown in that urban area, feeding the, the, uh, the, the homeless and ministering to them. But we are also commanded to go everywhere. And so we are fulfilling that. And if we do that, God blesses us. God anoints us. God uses that for his kingdom. And it's a command. It's not an option. A church that isn't going isn't being obedient to the commandment. And remember our core values, worship, word, walk, and witness. That falls into that fourth core value that we hold. So the group, if you don't know these guys, Stephen Brock, Stephen Brock, Cesar Rodriguez, Doug Moyer, <laughs> Eddie, George Hoy, or Oliven, that's his real name. I don't think I said that right, but that's okay. Robert Cummings. Can we give these guys a hand? What, I'm gonna, what we're going to do for the next few minutes is, uh, did y'all get a microphone? You didn't? Grab both of them. We're just, we're just going to kind of walk through this trip so that the purpose of this is to awaken in all of us the desire because these aren't the only five guys that are going to go on a mission trip. I believe you're going to go on a mission trip. And if you can't physically go, I believe you're going to be a part of it by giving or by praying, which is just as important. And so this is important for you to hear the heart. I'm telling you what, these guys will never be the same. I'll never be the same again. Because we're doing what God has called us to do. And God blessed in such a powerful, powerful way. Um, I've got one extra chair there, don't we? See, we have a missing chair. Somebody else should have been on this trip. <laughs> Amen. This is on. Guys, real quickly, in just a couple of words, what was something that just absolutely stood out to you? Stephen, go ahead and start. Hand him the mic there. Just something that just, bam, stood out to you. Um, well, first of all, this video that Lynn showed took a whole new meaning to me because we've been there. Yeah. You know, we've seen that. Uh, but... Uh, you know, the kids, they had a lot of joy. They really uh, were happy we were there. We were blessed. You know, they were blessed. But um, I think the joyful um, spirit that they have really spoke to me. Amen. Say so. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that I say uh, I miss my family tremendously. And um, I want to thank uh, my woman of God, Rachel. She wrote me five letters for each day, and uh, that really touched me and, and moved me tremendously. But first of all, I want to say that um, there is really no special moment to me on the, the whole thing.
just moved me. And uh, when I'm speaking out of my heart, um, like, like they say, donate a child. We was there. And uh, it was mind blowing knowing that these kids really need Jesus. And uh, I'll pass Doug, it on to you guys. Doug, go ahead. Um, it was amazing to me how God takes you out of your comfort zone big time. Um, the kids obviously were a big part for me. said I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> the day before we left, um, we walked into a prison. And uh, I used to watch a lot of lockup, you know, just to, you know, something to watch. But it was when you're inside those four walls or how many walls you want to call it. Um, The landscape of the inside of that prison was really no better than the city or the, or the towns or villages that we were in. The only thing that was different were, was they were locked up and there was no way out. But all that being said, there was probably about 20 guys that came in for the service and, and we had a great altar time and you know we was able to talk to them a little bit. And, Right before we got ready to leave, the, uh, the pastor shared a little bit. This guy works in this prison. Um, they check him in. He's there. And, you know, he's dealing with these guys every day. And if you can only imagine going to the office every day and looking at people that just, you know, want to kill you. You, know, you can be dead from one minute to the next. What you've got to say doesn't matter to them. So... We got ready to leave, and, and I just felt like uh, I've, I've never been one to say God told me to do this or God told me to do that. I'm very, uh, very cautious about that. But I felt impressed to go pray with him. And it's been years since I've allowed uh, the Spirit to move through me. And that man broke. And, and I don't know if you understand or not, but in Panama, a grown man doesn't cry. That uh, makes him look weak. And for me to be able to do that and, and let God use me in that way was, was the highlight of my trip. It was awesome. Thank you. Amen. 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 You told me you weren't going to do this. <laughs> you got you what going. was the question? <laughs> highlights. <laughs> tons and tons of highlights. Um, but the first day, you know, we touched on the kids. The first day when we went to that village up the river, when we were, <coughs> no, 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 the second day when we were helping the pastor build the house, this group of Four boys were coming back from school. Just unbelievably beautiful kids. One guy had shoes on, the other three didn't have shoes on. And I took pictures and I got to send them home to my wife and on a text and she texted me back. She goes, man, those kids just break my heart. And I said, those are the happiest kids I've ever seen. Because there was no material stuff, there was nothing. They were just skipping around and they saw us and they were, it was just a highlight in their day and they were smiling, they were happy, they were laughing. They had absolutely nothing. Right. They had a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. But there's, there was more, but that was Amen. the first amazing impression. Wow, what an amazing. <laughs> going, going back to our... Our elders, Tim and Dr. Heller, about six, seven, eight months ago, whenever the vacancy came up, 
and we were asked, and we, we didn't talk about this, but we were asked for patience over and over and over again to wait for God to bring us the right leader in the house. And I want everybody to give it up for Pastor because he is he's the real deal. Thank you. When we were tired and, and, and uh, hitting the wall, he just kept skipping around. And Barbie said this morning, she's like, man, look at the, look at the energy he has. And uh, it, it was awesome. I'm so glad you're the, the leader in the house, Pastor. Es bueno. Amen. Um, man, my highlight was just watching the Holy Spirit <laughs> just move. And I mean move. There was a girl that went to school and came to one of our gatherings, and she didn't know what was going to happen. She had no idea. But God knew what was going to happen. She's standing there, and we're worshiping, and she's, she's in the music and whatnot, and she goes like this, she goes like this, she's like, she's looking at herself, and she, she's getting this feeling over her, and then, she, like, I, I thought, oh, maybe she had a bug on her, and then she goes, she goes like that, and, and, and she's feeling the spirit, and she's like, she's rubbing herself, and we have it on film, it, we have it on pictures, it's the spirit of God was moving so great. That was my highlight. My highlight was watching the spirit move. Amen. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. God spoke to me on this trip. He spoke to me. I've been, I've been, wow, through pastors. Pastor spoke to me. I, I, I go into the inner city and we, and we, we, we help people out and we do things down and we minister here and we kick doors in and sometimes I don't wait for God to open them. But let me tell you something, on this trip, I learned to sit down for an hour and wait for the van and wait for the spirit to go before us. Amen. Wait for the spirit to go before us and prepare the way. Amen. And I saw the evidence of that obedience, of being patient and waiting on the spirit. Praise God. With what he did. Praise God. That's good. That's good. I bet. Stephen, uh, this, was, this was Stephen's first trip outside the United States. Uh, yeah. yeah. Curious, how many, uh, how many have never been outside the United States? Raise your hand. A lot, a lot of folks. Get ready. If you have your hand up, get ready. Get ready. Um, what was your, was this what you expected it to be? What was your first, what were your impressions when you, we first got well, first of all, I'm thankful for indoor plumbing, um, <laughs> running water uh, for the toilets. Um, it, was, it was a shock. It really was. I'm thankful for a lot. Yeah. And like I said, that video, it's like I saw the, this, a similar video during the Ramcor concert. They played one for Compassion. And, you know, you're, you're kind of distanced from it, but you say, oh, wow, you know, that's another way of life. But then when you go and see it, you know, that third world, world part of it, and we went over into the Darien province, and even in the city, you know, just trash everywhere. Um, no infrastructure to support that collection of trash. Manhole covers missing on the sidewalk. If you're walking down the sidewalk texting, you know, whoop, whoop, down you go. Um, logistics, yeah. yeah. Um, I got a nickname. Uh, logistics is my nickname. So, but it was just, it, it, I'm thankful for so many things here. We are blessed in this country, no doubt about it, and we, we we definitely need to not forget that and just bring God back to focus in this country instead of pushing them back like, you know, some, some organizations are trying to do, trying to push them back on the back burner. I mean, I am thankful for so much. Amen. The trip was kind of divided into the first couple of days we were, what he said, the Darien province, the Darien Gap. I don't know if you went home and Googled that, but that, that area borders the Colombian Colombia, okay, not a, not a, it's like a dangerous, you know, dangerous thing, a lot of drugs, everything coming up, and this area that we went is famous for violence and for uh, missionaries were, have been killed there, 
Um, and so if you saw some of the pictures, uh, we, we had a military escort in those dugout canoes with a motor on the back. <laughs> okay, So you're going down through there. And uh, so we had the military with us to make sure, you know, if anything weird happened, that they were, they were there. So this was a whole nother, nother thing. But what was amazing about this going into the, into the, the jungle and down the, the river, these, there would be villages as you go down through there, you know, several hours. And each of these villages, this ministry that we've connected with, that was my former pastor, Ronnie Hepperly, they have planted churches in all of these villages down through there. And so what we were doing was like what Paul the Apostle did in the book of Acts. It was completely the same thing. He would go and plant churches all around the, the Mediterranean realm. And then what did he do? He would go back and visit and see how they were doing two, three years later. That's exactly what we were doing. It was absolutely amazing, and we, it was so important because they are isolated, these pastors. And one, one, one place we went, it was a, a woman pastor. Yes, a woman pastor and doing a phenomenal job. And, but she felt isolated. She felt alone. And when we showed up, folks, you just can't. You, you like getting visited in the hospital? Totally different level here, okay? When we showed up, it was like the Lord himself showed up. It, it, that's what it represented. And we were able to encourage this, these two ladies. And as we did, each of us said something to her and tears, tears just, just falling down. It was absolutely beautiful. So, um, Eddie, you've been all over the world. I mean, you've, and you're from Norway, but you've traveled business, pleasure all over the world. Um, Quickly, tell us a little bit about jungle ministry and what, what kind of, what we went through there. Well, you didn't mention that the military also had automatic weapons with them. <laughs> I so, was glad for that, yeah. And we were like, why is this happening? And Ronnie, the head guy, is like, no, I don't know. There's normally something bad going on with this, when this is happening. <laughs> Secondly, the... Uh, the one of the things that I wanted to share was the encouragement and all that stuff when we went up the river the first day. And for me, it all started in our meeting in the conference room. And like Doug, I don't throw around, I feel like God talked to me, I feel like God spoke and all this stuff. But I am convinced that through Caesar Dominicano, the... Uh, God spoke through him to me because when this opportunity came up, I had a million excuses why I should not go on this trip. Listen to him now. This okay. Is for everybody. Okay, listen. And at home, again, I had my awesome wife encouraging me. But when, when, when Caesar, just in a casual conversation after the meeting said, I am so excited because somebody in Panama needs us there to that week of April, whatever. Amen. And everything changed for me. I mean, everything changed. All the stupidity went out the window. The devil, the devil had no more say in the whole thing. And then that first day, you know, and I shared with my family, I said, you know, somebody needs me in Panama. That's why I'm going, somebody needs me. And after that horrendous boat trip, sitting on the, the wood and cramping and heat and all that stuff. We got to the village and like Stephen said, it was just trash and, and houses about to fall down. Um, and then I realized why I was there because these two female pastors were in need of encouragement. They, they are working their tail off and, and uh, Ronnie said, the, the lead pastor, she's a really real go-getter. Uh, she's a single mom. She cooks chickens or whatever where we got on the boat to sell it to fund her ministry and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And with all that hard work and up and down the river and the inconveniences, they have seven members that they preach to every Sunday. Eight. Okay. And then 
we're there and we start speaking encouragement into them. And like Pastor said, the one, I don't know if she was associate or another church or whatever, she couldn't stop crying. And you saw the spirit just lifted them and they were ready for that next that next run, that next harvest of lost souls. It was amazing. Amen. Amazing. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Um, the reason why we said eight, and it's pretty awesome because I think it's, uh, I think it's awesome. She had seven people in her church when we got there. She was down. She was depressed. She was a little uneasy about, you know, things are not going the way they should. And we get there. And in our obedience, and we minister to her, and then there's an altar call out of nowhere, an altar call out of nowhere, just in kind of just the okay, the kind of um, talking and whatnot going on, and she gets one more soul, one more person that's going to our church. That's like God conf confirming, like here it is, here's right. the one, and right. it's going to keep going, and it's going to keep going, and it's going to keep going. So it, it was just awesome to see that. And Caesar led that boy to the Lord. He's a teenage boy. And Caesar led him to the Lord, prayed with him. <laughs> the second day, we had a little unexpected construction, didn't we, Doug? Uh, we weren't planning on building anything on this trip. But when we got to this, this other village, the pastor was building his home. The pastor was building his home. And had run out of material. Well, he had some material, but he ran out of help. There was only one guy over there, you know. And we got there and just started building his house. Just started working. We've got the, the master carpenter over here. He's, yeah. He jumps up a ladder. He's crawling on the top of the thing, nailing roof, you know, all this stuff in. I used to be a licensed contractor in Tennessee. Long story. Anyway. And uh, I grabbed a hammer, and we just we went to town, didn't we? Man, what a blessing! Such a good, such good stuff. Um, Caesar, you speak. Caesar speaks Spanish fluently. I mean, it's amazing. And of course, that's his first language. So I guess I should say you speak English fluently. It's really more like that. <laughs> He's like, duh, that's my language. What I mean, what was it like to you? Because here it's. I mean, yeah, you run into some Spanish people. A lot. I mean, there are a lot of uh, folks around here. But to use that, I call it a gift, that, as an opportunity for the kingdom and to be able to, to – he had never translated before. And I get him to preach the first night in the main church that all these little churches come to. It's kind of a camp meeting. And I preached that night in – I didn't know, but he suffers with stage fright. How many, how many know what I'm talking about? I mean, he would absolutely terrify you. And, and I hand him a microphone. <laughs> I said, here we go. <laughs> and he did amazing, amazing. What was, what was going through your head? What was that like for you? Well, like you said, it was frightening, but... <laughs> Um, I want to thank the Lord that he got me to my next element. Like right now, if, if I was to come out here because of the trip, I probably would have ran towards the back door. But um, I already knew that, that God had used me to my voice and to touch these people. Um, that when pastors just said, translate. I mean, we had this other guy that kept transfer, translating for, uh, for the whole crew, but um, I was pretty much in charge representing Mr. Allen and uh, my other people back here. And uh, I already knew that once I said to start talking, uh, he just let me there. Uh, he pushed me. He's like, go ahead, man. This is the reason why you're really here. Uh, you better start talking. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and once he pushed me and once I said the first three words, it was on, you know. Uh, yeah, it was listen, on. Listen, when we step out, even though it's uncomfortable, even though we can't imagine doing it, and I'm, I'm preaching to you. This is not just about Caesar. Every one of you, there are things that God has called you to do that scare you to death. 
But if you will take that first step, you will be amazed at what God will do. I'm Just for time's sake, I want to just share quickly what the, the money thing, okay? I'm just going to do a summary of what happened with Caesar. $1,500 to go on this trip. It's a lot of money. And it was a fast turnaround, too. This thing came up, and I said, if you can do it, 1500 bucks, you know? And he works the security booth at, at the, the front of a really high-end golf club, okay? And he is favored there because he's a nice guy. If you're having trouble at work, be nice. It's amazing how that works. It's a blessing. Those folks love him, and they're all rich. I mean, rich, rich. He could have, any one of those folks would have written him the whole, and not even thought. It'd been like five bucks for us, okay? Fifteen hundred, five bucks, you know, nothing to them. And so easily his trip could have been paid for. But God spoke to him and said, I want you to pay for this. And he had a savings account with about that much money in it that he was saving up to put stuff on his car to add stereos and, and wheels and all this stuff. And God spoke and said, I want you to use that money to go on this trip. And that's what he did. And he handed me that check, and, and uh, the next day or two days later or whatever, uh, he was witnessing and talking to these folks about what he was about to do, asking them to pray for him. And one of the ladies brought him. He didn't ask for it. Didn't ask for it. One of those, those folks brought him a check for $2,000. That's for the next trip, right? <laughs> The second half of the, uh, by the way, God will do stuff like that if you will put yourself out there. Um, the second half of the week, we had the opportunity to speak in front of hundreds, hundreds of students. We can't do that here in school. In the school, got to preach whatever we wanted to, have altar calls, the whole nine yards. And so that's what was happening Thursday and Friday of that week. Um, and listen, listen, listen. We had over 400 decisions for Jesus Christ in two days. In two days. And listen, that number is low, is it not? I, whatever, they would count heads. And if, if, it, if it was 200, I would say, okay, 150. Because these trips are notorious for people to lie. I mean, just flat out, oh, we had 8,000 saved, and there might have been 100. You know, it, it, that just happens in the world of this anyway. So I was like, we're not going to do that. We're going to be very careful with our numbers. And the thing is, it wasn't just numbers. The local churches, when we had these kids come up and they gave their hearts to the Lord, they got their name, their phone number, their emails, all of that stuff to follow up with them and get them involved in church. Man, awesome. Now, Doug, that first day we were, in that, we were in that school, and I handed you the microphone to, uh, to share. And I didn't know, but Doug had never been in front of that many people, ever. Ever. And I'm kind of like gifted with kicking people out of the nest. That's just sort of my, sort of my, my one of my spiritual, <laughs> I don't know what that's called. But, uh, but I handed you the mic, and just share a little bit about that. I had to translate for him too. Yes, and at the same time, they're both flying. Woo. Amazing. We, we had some exciting talks because we roomed together, so we got to talk about everybody. It was fun. <laughs> we made a lot of fun of people. Yeah. Um, a, as I said earlier, you know, it's, it's not, um, I, I, I don't know if it's custom or not, but I believe it's not a, it's not a thing where older kids or adults show emotion. And these kids, hmm, there was from, I mean, from this tall to, and they were all in uniform, military. It, it looked to me like some kind of naval academy. I don't know, they all had anchors, but um, I just shot it out there to them that, you know, nothing different than I would tell our kids here. Look, you set the example for these kids downstairs. Amen. And us as parents. My God, if you only knew who's looking at you. Amen. 
You have no clue. You might think it's just your kids that are watching you. That's not. You are, um, you're a, God's got a magnifying glass on your life. These teenagers are watching what you're doing. The little kids are watching what the teenagers are doing. And, and they are our next generation coming up. So if we're doing garbage, they're going to do garbage. The little ones are going to do garbage. They pick it up the fastest. Um, but that was my, my encouragement to them was, you know, just set the example. And that whole back row, remember, Pastor? Yes. They were standing up in uniform. I mean, even girls in uniform, probably in their early 20s, started to break, started to show emotion, started to cry. And that, you know, that to me is just, I love it. Yeah. Amen. Unfortunately, we're getting close to the end here. I had more things to talk about. I can't express to you. Words, English language can't express to you how proud I am of these guys. Can you give it up for them? They, phenomenal job. Thank you, guys.